We've got another bearded dragon right on this log here. Look at that, look at him. Hello. It's a pretty sizable male. That's the classic bearded dragon defense mechanism, flattening out his body. Whoa, look at this. How's that for a sizable bearded dragon? We had probably one of the worst storms we've ever had here last night, and look at this. There's fallen trees everywhere. Imagine something that big falling on your head. This is insane. Oh, oh. I've never seen anything like this in here, and I've been coming to this, oh, hello Arbus. I've been coming to this bush for the past five or six years. There's just so much debris everywhere. Oh, wow. That's the whole Broadwalk just gone. Oh, it's kind of sketchy. That is insane. Today, I'm searching for one of my all-time favorite reptiles in Australia the eastern bearded dragon. And they're pretty common in this patch of bush here, but if we really wanna see the most amount of them, we have to head out into the big open patches of forest, which is where I find they like to uh, bask right out in the open, and they'll be super easy for me to spot. So, let's head out to these fields, these big open spaces, and hopefully we shouldn't be too far off our first dragon. We've entered into some pretty solid bearded dragon habitat. Um, oh, there's one right there. There's one right there, you're kidding. It's gone straight up that tree. Yep, th this is why they love these areas, because if there's uh, a predator coming through, they can just go straight up one of these big eucalyptus trees and get out of the way. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> that is massive, that one's huge. Well, we know we're in the right habitat. Fortunately, I didn't get as close as I wanted to this guy, but he's still a sick find. There's a bearded dragon, a pretty big one right there. Yeah, he's dropping down. This is what they do. They stand up tall, and then once a predator starts to approach, they duck their head down and try and blend into the ground, all the, all the sticks and pieces of bark. And there he is right there. A massive, massive male bearded dragon. You can see how good his camouflage is. He looks identical to a stick on the ground. But how cool is this guy? Whoa, look at him go. There we go. Up the tree. This is what they do when they can't get away. When I can't get away from the predator, they go straight up a tree. That's the biggest bearded dragon I think I've ever seen in my entire life. That thing is crazy big. You're a good mate. Where's he going? Look. And here's a tree he should be able to get a better grip on. Here he is. The eastern bearded dragon. And this guy. He's quite chill for being such a massive bearded dragon. He's probably the biggest dragon I've ever seen in my entire life. He's literally, he's literally bigger than my forearm and hand combined. You should be able to see him pretty well now. But how's that? How's that for a sizable bearded dragon? It's really, really hot. So I don't really like mucking around with reptiles too much when it's, when it's a bit too hot. All right, see you mate. Let's go. Let's keep looking. Let's see if we can find any more. We've already seen two. So there should be a bunch more of these guys hanging around, foraging, looking for food. But a change in the weather meant that I had to head home as soon as possible. I've decided I'm probably best to come back another day because there's another storm brewing. I do not want to be anywhere near here when it hits. Seeing the amount of the destruction that the last one has caused, we'll have to come back either tomorrow or sometime next week. It's also nice to get out of the mosquitoes. So it's a brand new day and I've decided to come out here early in the morning this time. We should be able to spot bearded dragons basking because it is a bit cooler. They need to warm up in the mornings. Look at this, friggin' mosquitoes everywhere. Wish they piss off. There's a bunch of birds going off at something over here. 
normally when they do that, it's either a lace monitor or, or a carpet python or something. It could be something very cool. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. There's a lace monitor right there. Look at that thing. Going straight up the tree. Going right up the tree there. Fire out. That thing switched on. Beautiful colors on that one as well. And soon enough, I was spotting reptiles everywhere I looked. We're finding everything but bearded dragons. There's a red belly black snake just over here. I haven't seen a red belly in here for ages because it's been so dry. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Beautiful. They're freaking quick. He's got a nice little spot in there. You can just see his scales. This is probably why we're not seeing any dragons. Because instead of climbing up trees, they're just going straight into all the debris around here. We've got another lace monitor, and it's got a friggin' frog in its mouth. She's trying to eat this frog. Looks like she might be having a bit of trouble, or she's trying to just mangle it and make sure it's dead before she goes ahead and eats it, because they, they, they'll eat their prey whole. What a cool find. Mate, I was expecting to find tons of beauties, but instead we found a red belly black snake and two lace monitors. You can never plan these things, eh? Then after way too long, I finally spotted a dragon. And there we go. We've got our first dragon of the day. Right there, sitting flush to the trunk of this tree. I think it's a little female. It looks much smaller than the male we saw the other day. Now she's probably up there basking, trying to absorb as much heat as possible. And she's picked the perfect spot for it. She's right up in a tree, safe from most predators. What I find most amazing about bearded dragons is that they can actually change the color of their skin only very slightly. And that helps them when they're trying to warm themselves up in the morning. Because as you can imagine, darker colors absorb heat much quicker than lighter colors. So in the morning, they change to the darker colors to absorb as much heat as possible. And then once they've warmed up, they slowly transition into the more lighter browns and beigey kind of colors. And that'll slow down the amount of heat they're gathering and stop them from overheating as well. So it's a pretty ingenious bit of evolution that allows them to have a little bit more control over their body temperature than a lot of your other reptiles out here. Here we go. We've got another bearded dragon. You can see the color change between the last one we found and this guy. Super bright, doesn't want to absorb any more heat than it has to because of how friggin' hot it is today. Look at that, look at him. Hello. It's a pretty sizable male. Oh, right into the friggin' grass he goes. I left my camera in the bushes over there and he just bolted out over to this to this bit of a cool spot here. And look at that. Look at that for a defense mechanism. That's the classic bearded dragon defense mechanism. Flattening out his body. Almost like a pancake. Whoa, he's out of here. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone. And he's friggin' gone. Straight under there. Mate, you've earned that. Far out. Well, you can see how switched on that guy was. While the heat makes me a lot slower, it makes them much more aggressive, much more active, and way more flighty. That's the first one that's actually kind of given us the, the little threat display. All the others have been so friggin' chill. Uh, let's keep going. We'll see some more, I reckon. And sure enough, I found one last dragon to end off the day. Right behind this tree is a bearded dragon. Yes, we've finally got another one. He's definitely gone up the tree. Where is he? Oh, I see him, I see him. You're not the same one from, it's the, it's the same one from yesterday. There is no bearded dragon that is that big anywhere else around here. Oh, look at that, look at that. That's why they're called bearded dragons. He's puffing out his beard, making himself look bigger to try and intimidate me. Yes, you're very intimidating. As dragons age, they begin to develop blue, green or yellow markings on the top of their head. And this guy seems to have a little bit of blue in his head, so I'd say he's a pretty old male. Looks a bit mal malnourished, you can see his ribs along there. He might be nearing the end of his life, but he's had a very good run, if that's the case. What an awesome little adventure 
finding one of my favorite reptiles in all of Australia. And mate, no matter how many times I find these guys, they never cease to amaze me. Yes, the Eastern Bearded Dragon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the time I came face to face with Australia's strangest nocturnal wildlife.